Hey guys, Jonathan Kim here for What The Flick with another interview, and there's something extra special about this one. One thing that makes it special is that the interview is with Miranda July, the artist, performer, writer, actor, director, whose first film, Me and You and Everyone We Know, catapulted her onto the indie scene in 2005, winning the camera door at the Cannes Film Festival, as well as a special jury prize at Sundance. Her new film, The Future, is excellent, though a bit hard to explain. It involves a couple, played by July and Hamish Linkletter, who plan to adopt an injured cat named Paw Paw in a month, and realizing that the responsibility of being pet owners will change their lives drastically, the couple decides to quit their jobs and live their artistic dreams for a month, if only they knew what those dreams were. A lot of other things happen, some of which are kind of magical, including the fact that the future is interspersed with Paw Paw's narration as he waits for his adoptive owners to take him home. Like I said, the future is hard to explain, but it's a terrific movie you should definitely check out. But the really special thing is that Miranda July and I went to high school together in Oakland, California. I knew her then as Miranda Grossinger, and she was two grades in front of me, so unfortunately we didn't know each other at all. Still, it's exciting to have someone from your high school do well in such a big, interesting way, and it was fun talking to her about her new movie, with a brief detour down memory lane. So I hope you enjoy my interview with Miranda July, and I also hope you'll check out my new Netflix instant-based movie review and political commentary show, Rethink Reviews, which is on the TYT Network. So I saw the movie and I and I really loved it. And um, also I saw Beginners, uh, oh, your yeah. husband's uh, film, which I which I really really enjoyed. Yeah. And um, I guess first I'm wondering what's it like, kind of having two directors in the house, especially with two movies coming out at this you know, roughly right. the same time. Well, we knew. I mean, we met at Sundance when our first movies premiered there. So we've kind of there's never been a time where this wasn't happening for us and we were kind of both writing for years and so I think this this has been like the mountain we've been nearing for our whole relationship for the last six years so it's actually kind of nice like I, I had a lot of fears about it but it's it's pretty good being um, having like absolute understanding from the other person like he knows exactly how I'm gonna feel when I come home today after doing interviews you know because <laughs> he just did it it's it's mostly comforting also very intense I mean it's a little bit like a, a hot house our house you know <laughs> there's never not some like idea being written down or you know uh, but I guess we both love that or we wouldn't have chosen each other my brother is actually is, is a huge fan of, of, uh, of your first movie and he was kind of curious about uh, you know you're do, you do all these different types of, of art is there something about film that you feel is kind of not represented by the other arts you do or that, that somehow isn't it there's an advantage in film that isn't somewhere else or I mean all the mediums have their advantages um, like performance is very I feel very liberated in a way that I don't feel in film you know but on the other hand hardly anyone sees the performances I do that's just the nature of live stuff and uh, movies just technically you know a gabillion people see them and also they're just very inviting you know like they really just by their nature they're like easy and inviting so in, in some ways they're a great medium to to be harder in you know to try and like um, slip complicated things into because uh, no matter what it's still a movie which is just like a fantasy yeah were there movies that you remember seeing growing up or, or even you know when you were younger that really kind of changed your opinion about some issue or or, or made right. you empathize with someone you the type of person that you never thought you you might oh um well I don't hmm I mean, sure, there's like the crunking documentary, <laughs> if that's what you mean. <laughs> like, I didn't know about crunking before, and then I like, all I wanted to do was crunk. If that's, <laughs> um, that's not like uh, a movie I usually bring up ever, but I'm trying to like answer your question well, sure. so. So the, the screening, the press screening that I saw earlier this week, there were two, uh, two women sitting next to me, and whenever there was a pawpaw -paw scene, they were tearing up and like fanning their eyes. Yeah, so they, wow. would, they would cry, and I'm, I'm assuming that, that you've been getting a lot of response about that, char that character. What, what, what do you think it is that, that, uh, that kind of touches people so much about, about that character? Well, I mean, I really went all out emotionally with, with pawpaw, so, you know, that is to say like, ah, uh, there's, there's nothing mediated. I mean, it's just like pure 
longing. There's no game. There's no, you know, I mean, the game is already just that, like, not only is it a talking cat, but you only ever see his paws. You know, it's all, it's already so artificial that I think that allows me to just um, be a hundred times more transparent than would feel appropriate for a human character um, or a more naturalistic character. Uh, so that's, and I think also f for the audience, they can be open to maybe because it, it's already not real. They've already taken such a big leap just to like believe that this is happening at all, that they're kind of implicated from the beginning. In the interview, you were talking about sort of the, the scariness of, I mean, how you'd feel if you wanted to create, but just nothing came out, mm -hmm. sort of like your character didn't. I think there's these two ideas, there's like artist's block where it's like you aren't able to create, and then there's sort of like adulthood block where it's like, mm -hmm. okay, like it's time to, like, time to fulfill my dreams, but I can't even really remember what they right. are anymore. And, and you're, you're saying that it was really hard to kind of play this role and go into those two deep, Years. I'm kind of wondering what that was like, that process. Right. I mean, I think mostly it was hard to go into those because they're just kind of embarrassing. Like, it'd be a lot cooler. I mean, I'm pretty productive. No one has to know <laughs> that those are issues of mine at all. And yet, um, they are probably almost more as fears than actualities. I mean, truth be told, even though I worried every day that I wouldn't be able to make a second movie, there wasn't really any big problem, <laughs> you know, making it like, uh, but it seemed like, okay, well, if I'm going to spend so much time having this fear, maybe it's worth looking at it, you know, as embarrassing as that is, maybe it's worth my time. Yeah. I, I, was, I was a bit curious about whether, um, whether you've been offered any other, uh, film roles and, and whether you're interested in taking those or, or just more interested in, in doing uh, your own stuff right now. Right. Um, I have been, and I'm always like super excited and flattered and like, uh, it's as if I've never been in a movie, you know, I'm, I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to be in a movie. And then what inevitably happens is I'm like, oh, but wait, cause I wanted to do my thing. Like, I don't think like an actress at all. You know, I have like all these other things I want to do, which I'm just so used to them being the main thing that I, I have not yet, um, had a part come up where I was willing to like <laughs> put my work aside, although I think it'd be great. I'd, I'd probably learn so much and uh, uh, it, I should do it at least once, I think. I was thinking maybe you can just do like quirky best friend or something. I mean, you, they, you just get to show up, do your role, and then just go and sit in your trailer and not have to worry about everything else in the movie. Yeah. Right, I know, it seems like pretty fun. Um, <laughs> we'll see. Look, look for me as quirky best friend <laughs> soon. Since we went to high school together, I'm kind of wondering about, you know, what... what All I want to talk about is <laughs> high school. I can't believe we're wasting our time talking about anything but where we went to high school. Right. But, <laughs> but I mean, what, 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 do you, what sticks out for you about, 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 our time, about college prep? Well, I actually just wrote this piece um, this week about uh, an event my senior year, um, which you probably don't remember. I'm, I don't think you as a sophomore, maybe it impacted you, but it kind of had to do with me calling out another student whose name I will tell you later okay. um, for sort of like sexual harassment type stuff. Do you remember this at all? I know who it is. Okay. <laughs> um, which was kind of a bit, I mean, the piece that I wrote was called My First Feminist Action. Um, and it, as I was writing, I was like, is any of this true? <laughs> you know how there's a weird way, like stories you've been telling since high school, just at a certain point, you're like, I, can I get some verification on like what actually happened? But I don't know that you're gonna be a good source because as a, yeah, as a sophomore, it just may have been like, whoa. Did you what say are, something at assembly or? Um, well, I put up a poster all over campus. Okay, we're gonna get into this afterwards. Okay. <laughs> so, it wouldn't, oh, yeah. I got <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you.